Niagara has declared a state of emergency ahead of next month's solar eclipse. Ontario's Niagara region has declared a state of emergency as it prepares to welcome up to a million visitors for next month's total solar eclipse. Alan, the region says it is enacting the state of emergency out of an abundance of caution. On Thursday, the region put a state of emergency in place, noting that it strengthens tools to safeguard health and safety for residents, visitors, and critical infrastructure. Expecting in your city? Well, that's a great question, Melissa. Niagara Region has preemptively declared a state of emergency as it gets ready to host thousands for the upcoming total solar eclipse. The region of Niagara has declared a state of emergency. And that this is the equivalent of Woodstock, the Super Bowl, and New Year's Eve all rolled into one for Niagara Falls. Um, is that overstating it? Are you really expecting millions of people to come for Eclipse Mania? What's the biggest event you ever had? And we said Nick Walenda in 2012. We had upwards of 150,000 people. And they said expect eight to nine times that number that day. Wow. So that put, yeah, puts us well over a million and especially since National Geographic declared Niagara Falls the best place in the world to be that day. Hello and welcome down to Crystal Beach here on the uh, north coastline of Lake Erie where everyone's going to be gathering in a few days for the eclipse. So right behind me is the uh, parking lot for the Crystal Beach uh, Waterfront Park. And as of right now, you can see quite a few vehicles here. There's a few fishing boats out there enjoying the uh, Easter weekend. Uh, but that's all going to change in a few days' time. This parking lot will be completely closed down. No vehicle access. Uh, but this area is one of the designated viewing areas for the eclipse, which is coming up on April the 8th, which is a Monday, uh, if you didn't already know that. So we're expecting probably a few hundred people down here, right? Eh, maybe, maybe not. I think we could be expecting thousands. And uh, the reason why I think that, I have to take you to Niagara Falls to show you why I think that. And that's where we're going to go very, very shortly. But first... First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone that watched the last video, liked it and subscribed to the channel. It means a lot to me. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link somewhere. You know, I think YouTube has put their hands up like this and I'll put a link there. If you're watching on your TV though, the link will not appear. So just check in the description below and it'll be in there for the first video I did. Uh, okay, with that said, uh, while researching the solar eclipse over the past few weeks, uh, I've noticed now that my timeline has now been hijacked uh, by, what can I say, the... Uh, Biblical groups, the Bible groups, mainly from the deep south. And uh, a lot of their videos they're putting out there are kind of like Armageddon. Uh, on April the 8th, Jesus will reappear. And um, what's the other one? Oh, um, the, the eclipse is also going to play a massive part in the US elections and stuff like that. So anyway, what I've done, I'll put a montage together of all those little clips I came across. Not all of them, some of them I should say. Against a bit of fact from science. Enjoy. God has just revealed to me the meaning of the full solar eclipse happening on April 8th, 2024. You have to hear me out. This solar eclipse happening next month could fulfill a 2000 year old Bible prophecy. Yes, you heard me right. An eclipse happening here in America actually has some biblical significance. On April 8th, 2024, the sun will be eclipsed by the moon and the afternoon will turn into night according to some biblical scholars. But it is a sign of the times, a biblical omen that could precede the return of Jesus. The upcoming eclipse on April the 8th has sparked a variety of conspiracy theories, some of which have involved religious interpretations. For instance, some conspiracy theorists, including Alex Jones, have suggested that the eclipse is a sign from God and there are claims that the Department of Homeland Security is planning to hijack this biblical event, though no evidence or reason for such an action has been provided. Question, could this event be more than a mere coincidence? 
Could it be a final warning? There are also theories drawing parallels between the eclipse on April the 8th and the Bersagali eclipse, also known as the Assyrian eclipse, which is historically connected to the biblical story of Jonah and Nineveh. Uh, some believe that the eclipse's path over places named Nineveh in the US is significant, although only two such places will eventually experience the eclipse, contrary to what this man says. This is a little bit different. Why is that? Because it goes over seven cities in the United States that have the same name. What is it? It is the name Nineveh. Are you kidding me? You know that the solar eclipse happening on April 8th is a lot more crucial than you think. Jesus spoke about Matthew. That it is important to note that these theories lack scientific evidence and often stem from misinterpretations or sensationalism. Solar eclipses are natural events caused by the moon passing between the earth and the sun, blocking the sun's light. They have been predicted and explained by science for centuries. While these conspiracy theories can be intriguing, they should be approached with a critical mind, considering the lack of factual support and the scientific understanding of solar eclipses. I was asking God and praying to myself just in my heart and my mind, God, what is the meaning of this solar eclipse? Look at that. You know, if you ever needed convincing that we live in a solar system, that we are on a ball of rock orbiting around the sun with other balls of rock, then look at that. That's the, the solar system coming down and grabbing you by the throat. A total eclipse is actually quite common, with about two to three happening most calendar years. What is rare is for the path of totality to move across cities of dense population. Because of this, Ancient texts that record total eclipses can be matched with modern records to give us an approximate date of past events. Because the Greek philosopher Thucydides recorded a total eclipse in the first few months of the Peloponnesian War, we can calculate that it started on the 3rd of August, 430 BC. Eclipses only happen when the Moon's tilted orbit lines up perfectly with Earth's orbital plane between us and the Sun. Eventually on 19th May, 1919, Arthur Eddington successfully photographed a total solar eclipse, thus verifying Einstein's general relativity. If the solar eclipse happens here, another one with a similar path will be visible 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours later. However, because of those extra 8 hours, the Earth will have rotated 120 degrees farther around, and the eclipse path will be shifted 120 degrees westward of the last one. And the same goes for the next eclipse in the cycle, and the next, and the next, and the... you get the idea. Alright, I'm standing by uh, the Highway 420 here in Niagara Falls, which is going to be a pivotal area of Niagara as traffic tries to make its way into Niagara Falls for the eclipse on April the 8th. Now, a couple of days ago, the, uh, the region of Niagara Falls, sorry, the region of Niagara itself has declared a state of emergency as we lead up to the 8th due to the abundance of people coming in to the region for the eclipse. Now, I'm standing right here. This is the uh, split here of the QEW where if you stick to the left, you end up going towards Niagara Falls. If you stick to the right, you head towards uh, Buffalo and Fort Erie. Now, whilst I was driving around yesterday, um, sat in traffic of, of all places down in, Bur in uh, Hamilton, I started to think to myself, how many cars actually travel along this highway every day? How many cars would there be bumper to bumper uh, between a certain point? So when I got home yesterday, I decided to get the computer out, the map, and measure it all. So I went from kilometers to feet and so on, and I came up with a rather surprising number. So what I did, I, I, I took a point, because I was actually on the Skyway, I thought, you know what, let's measure from the Billington Skyway all the way to here, which is this point right here. So the vast majority of the way is a three-lane highway from the Billington Skyway. Actually, it's, it's four lanes briefly until you get to Stony Creek, and it goes to three lanes. It's three lanes all the way until you get to about Mountain Road, then it goes into two. So I measured that and that was 65 kilometers, which if you put that into feet is 213,255 feet. Now what I did then, I took the average length of a car, which is 15 feet. Then I then added, let's say if you're stuck, you're stuck in traffic, you're gonna be like a five foot gap between you and the next car. So these are just averages. So that's 20 feet. So you gotta, first of all, I got to multiply 213,255 by three lanes. And that'll give me a grand total of 639,765 feet of roadway between Burlington Skyway and here in Niagara Falls at the 420. Now, how many cars would that be? Well, the average is 20 feet now, so I divide that. So between 
Burnton Skyway and this point here, 65 kilometers, you can approximately get bumper to bumper 32,000 cars. 32,000 cars. Now, just think of that number for a minute. 32. Because let me just remind you what the, uh, the mayor of Fort Erie said, uh, Jim Diaddy, and this is what he said. At about a million people. That's right, one million people. So now let's do an average again. One million people, let's say a million people do show up. So if a million people come here, uh, not every car is going to be one person. Let's do an average of three people per car, all right? Say, make it easier, all right? Because there'd be couples, maybe some small families. So now let's make that top of 333,000 cars ascending on Niagara Falls, give or take. Then once you get into Niagara Falls, where are they all going to park? I mean, I've driven around the place. There's only so many places you can park. Now, this is the worrying bit for a small town because if the traffic is all backed up here, and just the other day I was speaking to a representative down in Port Coburn for the city there, and they're now starting to get concerned as well because if people start seeing traffic as they drive along the QEW and it's all backed up, a lot of people are going to decide, you know what? Let's go down to the Highway 406 and head down towards Port Coburn because a lot of people know the best place to view the solar eclipse is down by the waterfront between Port Coburn and Fort Erie. And Fort Erie is that way. And of course, Fort Erie is in total totality, 100%. So as people come along here, if, if, if they can't get off at 420, they're gonna keep going all the way down to Fort Erie. And that's why I think Fort Erie, Ridgeway, Crystal Beach, and now possibly Port Coburn could be in for a very, very rude awakening. Down by the uh, the ghost station here in Niagara Falls. Uh, right now there's no train here. I was gonna wait for one, but it's gonna be a while. So what I'm gonna do now is put a video clip on, which I recorded last year, of a train coming out of West Harbor in Hamilton. As I tell you about the train service, uh, on April the 8th, they're gonna put on uh, three extra trains in the morning, leaving Union Station at 9.02, 10.02, and 11.02, uh, which will bring you down to Niagara Falls. And in the evening, there's gonna be four going back. Uh, you have to check the timetable for those particular times. Uh, the trains are gonna be 12 cars long so it's the maximum they can go uh, 200 people per car I believe it is uh, so that's 2400 people they may get more in with standing and I don't know whether or not they're going to have in the bicycle car on there either as well so anyway that is what you need to know if you can get the train get there early because I do believe it will be really 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 busy if you're expecting a million people down here I mean <laughs> go transit learning be able to bring a fraction of those people in not even a full percent probably if a million people show up so uh, get down early and don't be disappointed and when you get here you will be disappointed because this is what <laughs> it looks like down here this is basically the dump of Niagara Falls which will be revitalized in the coming years Niagara Falls has an additional cell tower erected there to help with the cell service, but still think it might crash. Just thought I'd swing by here, uh, NGH, Niagara General Hospital, and uh, how is a small little hospital like this, this is a little dinky hospital by the way, um, how is this going to cope if a major emergency happened on April the 8th? You've got to take that in consideration, it's full as it is, and it's always busy. Uh, there's, no, there's always a shortage of beds here. People are always waiting in the, uh, the triage area for hours to be seen to. So it makes you wonder if something was to happen during the eclipse, uh, a scare, a crush, or just, just anything, an accident. I mean, how is this place going to cope if we have a million people down here? It's just going to be absolutely insane. Anyway, food for thought. It's a beautiful day down here. It's one week to go until the uh, solar eclipse and this place is going to be absolutely packed. You're wondering where I am? And down in Fort Erie right now, it is, I'm just at the back of the old fort. You can just see in the picture there. And right behind me, they've just erected another cell tower for the area to help boost the signal, help people along, making sense in their Instagram, Twitter feeds, uh, Facebook feeds and stuff like that. And basically just keeping the cellular service alive the best they can. Now, uh, I'll show you a bit more of this in a minute, but I just want to point something out because uh, right now it's beautiful. But if you're going to come here, the ground is absolutely saturated. Look at this.
it is like a bog so um, I hope they don't expect cars to be on here because it'll be an absolute mess uh, but even just walk along here is going to be pretty crappy so anyway yeah the cellular towers are going up here in Fort Erie to help uh, boost the signals and stuff um, we'll check out a few other places around here um, before I get it going but it's exactly a week to go today uh, it is Monday and these guys are hard at work I gotta look how quiet it is right now literally just a handful of cars coming down every uh, minute or so very quiet but uh, come Friday and especially over the weekends we lead up to uh, Monday of the 8th this will get really really busy congested and we know what the QEW is like if it gets congested it can back up for miles absolutely miles uh, so prepare yourself if you're heading down to Fort Erie down the QEW or even over to Buffalo expect massive delays all right once you get down to uh Fort Erie and you exit at Central Avenue here and uh, you pretty much like you have to turn right and as you see on the drone shot right now literally that's the parkway right in front of you now I don't know where everyone's going to be parking but they're expecting a lot of people here but there's very little in the way of parking down here so I don't know where all the cars are supposed to go this is Fort Erie the very bottom if you're coming down bring your patience make sure you got all your uh, all the stuff you need make sure your car is fully fueled up and you have some provisions like water, snacks and stuff like that because you're going to have a long drive home once the eclipse is over. Similar to what we saw in Fort Erie, uh, another cell tower going up, temporary one of course, uh, to help with the crowds that are coming down here. Uh, it's going to be nuts, absolutely nuts. Now last time I think Crystal Beach area saw something as busy than what we're expecting uh, next week it was probably 2014 when we had the ice caves uh, we had like a whole two weekends I think it was back to back uh, where crowds like thousands came down uh, over the weekend uh, to check out the ice caves which was a, a phenomenon really uh, not many people see anything like it so they came down uh, the road was jammed all the way from literally the, the, the lake all the way up to through the Stevensville uh, people trying to get down here and of course before that would have been when the last time it had real big crowds would have been back when the amusement park was still open back in the 80s where uh, several thousand would have come down on a popular summer's weekend uh, to check out the amusement park but those days are long gone so uh, I think if the weather is any similar to what it is right now I think you're going to be seeing crowds down here like never seen before ever and it'll be something you'll never probably see again in our lifetimes anyway not just the event itself just the crowd because there's no other reason why tens of thousands of people will want to come down here so anyway i'm gonna have a walk up uh, here into crystal beach onto the waterfront and have a look all right i'm just uh reading something i found on the uh, facebook there is some activities going on down here oh i just lost it so i've just read appearing in crystal beach on the weekend of uh, the eclipse duo leaper did i read that right duo leaper yeah you know duo leaper oh hang on no it's spelled different it's duo leaper <laughs> so it's not the duo dear leaper dear looper it's, it's like it just spell sounds the same spelled different so anyway uh crystal beach has a bunch of activities on for that weekend uh good vibes uh, they've got three locations um of where they'd be hosting these things and this is one of the locations right here and they've got uh, somewhere else in the middle of town here and then at the waterfront uh, just where the boat launches the uh, crystal beach uh, waterfront park is another uh, area it's got three main areas anyway i'm going to post a link in the description below so you can check it out so if you live in the area or you're down here for that uh, for the event you can come and check it out keep the kids busy all right i, I kid you not if the weather is this good <laughs> next week this place is going to be absolutely packed down here um i think more people want to come down to the water when i was in niagara falls the, uh, the other day driving around i noticed one thing if you want to try and get a scenic photograph of the eclipse and uh, i know some photographers out there thinking of that um there is nowhere on the canadian side i don't think where you could take a picture of the eclipse with the waterfall in it it's very very limited due to where it is because the sun is actually closer to behind the hotels and in a different part of the sky uh, the best view if you want to get a, a, a nice shot of Niagara Falls and the Eclipse if you've got a nice camera you can get a nice angle of it all will be on the 
US side Niagara Falls because they'll be looking directly over to the Canadian side so they'll get it in but as for the Canadian side they're not going to get it and here what time is it now we're about an hour away from when the eclipse would start so you've got a beautiful spot here on the beach looking out over the lake and uh yeah it's a good spot here uh, same with the uh over with the boat ramp and same with Ford area as well that'd be a nice location so at one point i wasn't going to really promote it i was trying to deter people but i've noticed now the town of Ford area is also still promoting it and so on so i'm like you know what if, if people want to come down for this once in a lifetime event get on down here but just be prepared for chaos you have to be prepared because the weather's nice chaos will come if you're coming from out of town make sure you make sure you fill up your car uh your suv your truck whatever you're coming in fill it up with gas uh before you get close to town so you got enough gas while you're here and also to get home because we're gonna run out of gas down here if we have a lot of people also bring provisions water some snacks and stuff like that because you might get stuck and our shops if it's busy might sell out pretty quickly of everything and you don't want that to happen so just be prepared as well oh my god this water looks lovely It's now a week away and the weather forecast, <laughs> get this, the weather forecast now is looking pretty good for us. Uh, over a week ago, it was most likely going to be cloudy. Uh, there's no storms um, on the map anywhere or anywhere coming nearby. So we're clear of storms and as of this morning, they're now saying it's a good chance uh, cloudy with sunny spells. So that's actually really, really good. But being Lake Erie, things can change in a heartbeat, just like that. And it can get really nasty really, really quick. But uh, the closer we get, we're going to have a better idea. But as of right now, uh, there's no active weather. So uh, wherever you're going to be for this amazing experience, I really, really hope you and your families all enjoy it. Take it all in. It is a chance of a lifetime because the next time an eclipse is over this part of Canada, it is going to be in 2144, I think it is. And, and this, why this eclipse is so big this time around is because the moon is so close to Earth right now. So the, the diameter of the moon as it passes right in front of the sun is going to completely cover the sun, whereas usually you get a nice ring right around it. This is going to completely cover it because it is closer. And they're going to, they keep talking about that diamond effect. You're going to be seeing that. So uh, I've got my glasses. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, but even if it's not sunny, you're still going to witness uh, dusk darkness and like a dawn all within like five or six minutes it's going to be an amazing experience so uh, make sure you're all prepared and have your cameras ready and please don't look directly at the sunlight without those glasses on also another thing i forgot to add um i was on the niagara parks website they've also now posted uh they're closing all the boat ramps so anyone who's thinking of going out on the water even though their message from the town and also from Niagara is saying we discourage boaters but they've gone beyond discouraged they're actually stopping anyone from going out on the water unless you have a private launch which is kind of like discrimination really isn't it so anyway the boat ramps are closed in Niagara Falls from Chippewa all the way down the Niagara River by, National, uh, by uh, Niagara Parks and then from Fort Erie uh, from the river all the way along here to Crystal Beach and maybe I, I got a feeling, feeling Port Coburn's probably going to close theirs as well to keep people off the water which is a shame really because my whole plan for over a year was to be out on the lake and document this being, being on the beach and seeing stuff and try and get some nice shots uh, especially by the lighthouse area and also from behind looking at the crowds and I thought it would be fantastic but unfortunately they're keeping us off the water oh well Anyway, uh, from Hopewell, uh, just let you know, on the day of the eclipse, I will be out documenting it the best I can. Uh, we'll make a video, and we'll put it out probably the next day. Uh, but throughout the day, I will be posting small videos, probably on my Twitter account, which is uh, uh, Lake Erie Vlogger. And uh, maybe on YouTube, I'll just put some shorts on very quickly, like, not shorts, like my shorts, but like short videos. All right, and we'll put them up as often as we can. As long as we have a cell signal, I'll keep posting. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed these uh, last couple of videos on the eclipse. I uh, wish everyone a, a wonderful time watching it. And uh, if you've got little kids, make sure they've got those glasses on. And for yourself, likewise. And just be prepared for the worst. Um, I don't really like big crowds. I'm, I feel safer down here. Uh, but I was in Niagara Falls, I'll be a little bit worried. I mean... <laughs> You hear about these things all over the world, these massive events, and there's always some plonker out there. So uh, always be prepared for the worst, but hope for the best. Enjoy.